So after failing in 2018, this is what we get now. 11th World Cup appearance, hasn't missed consecutive World Cups since, like I said before, 1954 to 1986. So I don't even want to talk about the stats, all right? Let's just bring the man up on the screen, Taylor Twelman, looking very sharp, looking like a Peter Millar catalog. After failing in 2018, Taylor, <laughs> what did the U.S. do differently during this qualification period for them to move on to the World Cup, even though that loss tonight was embarrassing? Yeah, I mean, Max, listen, embarrassing is difficult. I know what you're getting at. It's very anticlimactic, obviously, to lose 2-0 in Costa Rica, a place that the United States men have never won and still qualify. However, they qualified because they took care of business in the other games. Now, there's there were a few bumps in the road. And there were many a times that I was on SportsCenter asking some questions about this young group. But I think you have to give Greg Berhalter a ton of credit because he relied on a young group and allowed them to make their own mistakes, to find their own identity, and to not rely on a ton on the generation that missed out on the World Cup in 2018. So while a little bit of this is redemption, the other big part of it, it's a younger generation trying to find themselves, and they found themselves qualifying for the first World Cup as they are the big generation of this group. All right, so we talked about the younger generation. What are, what's the development of players like Christian Pulisic and Weston McKinney and others meant to this successful qualification period? Well, listen, Christian Pulisic was part of the team that failed to qualify. He was the young gun. He was the new bright, bright shiny wheel on the tour, and he took it very difficult. He took it hard, and I think this too, was a long process for Christian to come into it, to grow into it, and to know that he is the leader of this younger generation. Now, Tyler Adams, Weston McKinney, Serginio Dest, uh, Giovanni Reyna, all of these names are young players. Max, here's the most important thing. They're not going to be judged on the 2022 World Cup. They're going to be judged on 2026 when it's in their own house and it's in their own building and in their own country where then now you're getting this younger generation playing two or three World Cups. Max, the majority of the world has an upper edge on the United States because their golden generation of players, they get three or four World Cups. The United States usually get one and a half, maybe two. This generation should, knock on wood, barring any injuries, get three World Cups. That's something the United States men have very rarely, if ever, have been able to tip, put their cap on that. And so that's where this becomes very important. Okay, so with all that being said, what are your expectations for this team in November? Well, tell me what the draw is, Max. <laughs> they, 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 listen, we, we can't handicap this yet until I know who they're okay. playing. Listen, the Brazil, the Germanys, and the Frances of the world, they don't need to know the draw because they're favored no matter who they're going to play, and they're worried about winning the tournament. Every other country looks at the draw because that has a huge impact on what they are. Now, the United States will be in pot two. In 2014, they were in pot three, and that put them in the group of death. So all of this depends on who wins the playoffs and fills in the pot four. But I can't handicap anything until I see where they are with the draw. I'd be shocked if they don't get out of their group being in pot two. But again, you can't handicap that until you know who they're drawn against. All right, so the word of the day kids is patience. Taylor Twelman, he always knows what he's doing. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app and for live streaming, premium content, and of course, ESPN FC seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.